talk to you about an epidemic. It's an epidemic that affects about a million young people every year, and it's one for which there's no vaccine, there's no cure. The Gates Foundation calls it the silent epidemic. And in this epidemic, there's at least a million students, high school students every year who drop out of school. So when you look at this and you kind of ask yourself, what is going on? What do you see? When you drill down, it's because they're bored. Just not engaged enough to go to school, to attend lectures, and then to graduate. Well, I think this is a deadly epidemic, and it's one that I think about a lot. It haunts me. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about my search for a cure. Let me start with a story. So this is my story of Sergio Alvarez, ninth grader, New York, has failed pretty much every math test he's ever taken, despite the help of teachers and also paid tutors. Um, you know, but he wants to be an engineer, uh, an engineer who designs and makes planes. The harsh reality, you and I know, that this is very unlikely. It's more likely that he's going to drop out of school, get bored like the others, and struggle all his lives. But wait, this is my story, so I get to say what's going to happen. So Sergio goes online and discovers Open Study, which is our study help site, and there he meets Hero. Hero takes an interest in him. And six months later, we get this. He's making 90s in his math. Fairy tale with a happy ending, you think? Well, not quite, because it's not a fairy tale. There's many others like Sergio, who's very real on Open Study. And then, I don't think it's an ending, do you? I actually think of this as a very happy beginning. So it's when this happened that I realized that we had created something good, something powerful, and something with potential and perhaps something that could offer a cure for that epidemic. But first, I had to build a system, and it couldn't just be academic research, it had to be real. And to do that, this was a realization that I came with first. Between failure and success, for pretty much everybody, there has to be a human being. It's a teacher, a mentor, sometimes a peer, for some of you, it might be, thank you, mom. So that was the realization. And working on that, we went to the next step. But how did all this happen? You know, this kind of go back a few years. Several years ago, you know, beautiful spring morning in Atlanta. I'm crowded in my little blue Honda Fit, carpool time, three kids. And my eldest, who's 16 in high school, has a chemistry test. So he turns to me and he says, <clears throat> Mom, can you explain osmosis? Now, you know, I'm a chemistry faculty, so I'm thrilled, you know, interaction with teens and all. So I launch into this beautiful explanation, award-winning faculty, osmosis. And then, at the end of it, he says, oh, thanks, cool, but I'm going to ask my friends. So that was my thunderbolt. That was my big aha moment. And you know, it's actually quite the best thing that's ever happened to me in carpool in Atlanta, but I don't know about you guys. So that's when I realized the true power of peer learning. So he graduated, my son graduated a couple of years ago, and now we're waiting for Sergio to graduate, and he'll graduate with help from his friends on Open Study. So what next? It's a very nice story of Sergio and Hero, but that's not it, is it? Unfortunately, today in the world, there are over 100 million young people with no school and no college. How on the earth are we going to find enough heroes to teach all of them? To me, the answer was pretty simple. They're just going to have to teach each other. But before that, we needed that platform that could provide a global scale peer learning. And that was where we were headed with open study. Um, when that happened to me, when I, I had to take this decision, how to build this system, and that's when I had to reinvent myself, trade in my academic robes of a faculty and dean, move to the valley, trade in the robes for the jeans, the car for the bike, and then learn a lot. So I learned a lot, and one of the things I learned was 
how to face rejection over and over again when you go do the rounds in Sand Hill Road. I think I got an A on that one. And then collect the help. Um, but we did get funded. Thank you very much, National Science Foundation, for your blessings. The Gates, the Hewlett, the National Institute of Health, Learn Capital. You see, it's all very well to have a great idea. But to make it a reality, you need funding. So thanks to all of them, we went ahead and built Open Study. We had a great team. Um, our co-founders, Ashwin Ram, and CEO, um, Chris Sprague, is out there. And then you need the help of friends. Not only friends, but friends, friends, and friends, friends, friends. And that was one of the reasons I came to, open, to, um, to the Valley. I'd heard there are a lot of startups here. Anybody, any entrepreneurs in the audience? Raise your hand. Came to the right place. And with the great team, the friends, and funding, we built Open Study. Now, we have over, th over several thousands of Sergios and as many thousands of heroes on the system. Let me introduce you to a few of them. So, there's Eric. Eric is an undergraduate at Texas A&M, engineering student, and learning comes easily to him. But it's when he teaches that he says that he finds it really worthwhile. And he loves the fact that on open study, he's able to meet engineers from NASA and other places that give him a context for the equations he's studying. There's Samuel. We love Samuel. He's from Ghana, and he has been teaching himself computers by himself. Began encountered open study when he was um, studying by himself on one of MIT open courseware's computer science courses. He says he has the confidence to attack any chemistry test now, thanks to open study. Well, here's what I say. We think he has the confidence now to walk into any college admissions office, and they should be happy. In fact, he's being recruited already. And there's Saif Khan, all the way in Pakistan. Can you believe this? This 17-year-old has helped thousands of people learn math. Thousands. He's only 17. I'm ready to write him a letter for Cambridge. And then there's Christy. Christy is one of our most sought-after math experts. But remember, she knows the value of a mentor. She, was, she started out with remedial math in a community college, and now she's on her way to a PhD. She's also a college faculty in Arkansas. We love Christy. And Catherine, can you believe this biology graduate student in Australia was too timid to even answer a question when she started. Now, she's a power user, a moderator. She hands out judgment and wisdom equally on the late night shift and open study. Just a few of these people. So, how do we make this work? For anyone who has a teenager, anyone with teenagers in the house, the answer is actually blindingly obvious. Give them a Facebook-like site, and the social interactions will keep them engaged. And then the peer-to-peer -peer learning really drives true and, and long-lasting learning. And then the users complain, quite happily though, oh, we're addicted. Addicted to math. When was the last time you heard that? <laughs> so we've proven this model over and over again. We have over 100,000 users from over 40 institutions, including the MITs and the Yales, 170 countries. More than 1,000 questions are asked and answered within five minutes. Our impact? When surveyed, more than 80% of them said not only did they enjoy learning, they also reported a better learning in their courses that they'd studied. How do we do it? Game mechanics. Take a look at Seth, Sefu as we call him. He's got over 100 fans who write him testimonials, and when he answers a question, if it's truly helpful, users give him a medal. He's got over 4,000 medals, 4,000. The medals, the fans, the testimonials, the achievements, these are the elements of game mechanics which keep our users coming back again and again and again. And as they come back, they learn to talk to each other politely, respectfully. They learn what it is to work together, to communicate, and for some of them, it becomes a passion. They become a part of a family, a community of practice, and they learn that being a part of a family is helping one another. So, this is our takeaway moment. 
when I realized that because of the community of practice that we had built, we were actually doing what Voltaire said many years ago, even before Facebook existed. When one person teaches another, two people learn. And that's where we go to my paid forward idea. Because I believe we found a cure, a vaccination for that silent epidemic that we've talked about. And our goal is to inoculate every student in the United States, but also beyond in every continent, and maybe every planet if there's life outside. And we can do this, but this vaccine cannot be manufactured in any lab. It's going to take your help. It's going to take all of us working together. And this is my paid forward idea. If all of us could take 10 minutes to teach 10 people, we could solve this problem together. Because when you teach 10 people, some of them will teach 10 others. And then 10 will teach 100. 100 will teach 1,000. It will become viral. And before you know it, we'll have thousands of people teaching millions. And then we can reach every Sergio in the world. Together, we can make a difference. I thank you for your time.